So I finished playing Mirror's Edge quite recently, and finishing that game, it was a fantastic experience, and it was the first time I'd finished playing it in its entirety. And I mean, throughout the whole time, I was already engrossed with the anti-authority, anti-conformity, anti-government blanket of dystopia over the game, which was very unique to the early 2000s. And finishing the game, kind of my first thought was, it's a real shame that this breed of game design has kind of just faded away. The word to use to describe the general vibe and the general message of the early 2000s sort of dystopian video games is vigilant. It wants you to be vigilant, which was always generally the fear, I think, was this fear that if you weren't vigilant, if you didn't fight for yourself, you were going to meld into their metal. You were going to become an unwitting piece of their statue, their statue of rubble that they've forged. And if you weren't vigilant, you would find yourself within it and a part of it. And this was also sort of a trend even before gaming, obviously. I mean, all gaming trends kind of began long before gaming. And before gaming, you had filmmaking. You had a sort of movement, a cultish movement in the 70s and 80s with filmmakers like John Carpenter and George Romero, who very much leaned into that anti-authority vigilance, where they're there to depict a dystopia, some kind of disaster situation, where it's revealed that maybe the people in charge don't have your best interests at heart. Maybe they don't actually care about you as much as you think they did. There will be a, there will be a report this afternoon. There perhaps there will be yes, a report. Yes. A more Later. Report. We are doing everything possible to solve the problem. I mean, Escape from New York, John Carpenter in general is a great example in filmmaking in Hollywood of the anti-authority sentiment we used to have, of the strong, classless resentment for authority, where we're willing to depict a fictional, albeit, but a president in a story being dressed up like a doll by thugs and thieves and low lives. I think our media used to be much more geared in this direction to where we weren't so immediately trusting of authority. We didn't afford respect instantly to our authorities. We were somewhat questioning. Why did you do it, Mason? Why? And, uh, and like gaming, like in gaming, that trend has kind of died off. It's not really here anymore, at least not in such a concerted collective effort anymore. And then this also kind of just died with filmmaking. And really, I think it's been a trend in general across all mediums for a long time. But with filmmaking specifically, I just got to say, I think Oppenheimer, the success of Oppenheimer in recent memory, not just the box office of how many tickets it sold, but critically, just being down the line, nominated and winning so many Oscars. I don't even know how many. I don't really keep up, but it's way too many. It's insanity, Oppenheimer, that this is where we have gone in the mainstream. This is now what we're geared towards is Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer, when years ago, 40 years ago, we had Escape from New York, where we were mocking and laughing at and berating our elected officials and calling them just total like idiots who just can't even hold their own weight. You know, if the society crumbled, they'd get the shit kicked out of them. They wouldn't be able to defend themselves. These people are feckless when stripped of secret service, when he doesn't have his security detail, when he's not on a plane, when he's left to his own devices in a, in a prison of his own making, he gets the shit kicked out of him. If you fought for the Duke of New York, you're a number one. And he becomes a slave. That's Escape from New York's statement. It just totally strips the president of any respect, of any veil of righteous authority or prestige. This is where we used to be in society and with artists. And Oppenheimer, which for the record is a film about a state-funded mass murderer who invented the atomic bomb and led to the deaths of hundreds of thousands of people. We make a full movie, a three-ish hour movie about this man, and we don't really make fun of him. We don't really paint him as the villain and the psychopathic murderer that he was. We eulogize him, and the whole movie is a makeup campaign to to resurrect this corpse from hell to give him nice hair and like blue eyes and nice teeth and a hat and a pipe and try to convince you that he's anything but just a walking corpse from hell. 
seriously, that's the entire movie. It, it, it's almost like a challenge. It's some kind of challenge. Like Christopher Nolan was given a bet or something. He made a bet with someone. I'm going to pick the worst character in history, the absolute worst scumbag, irredeemable piece of shit in history. And I'm going to make a three hour movie about him. And like, and like that overnight, everyone is going to think he was awesome. Everyone's gonna actually feel bad for him. He's actually gonna get sympathy now from everyone just because I made a movie about it in Hollywood. In a world where that is the modus operandi, a world where our filmmaking no longer criticizes authority, it no longer provokes fear in the audience, and through that fear embeds a vigilance in them. When our filmmaking no longer operates to plant a vigilance in you, but rather it is there to dull your vigilance, to dull your critical thinking, to dull any sense of rebellion or anti-authority, when it exists to actually eulogize the worst of state-funded psychopaths when it's there to convince you that the people who actually did genuinely hate you, who actually did hate you and murdered people not so different from yourself, when the filmmaking is now going to defend these types of people and it's going to go down the line of thinking where they were actually the victims, when they were the victims, and now, and guess what, and here's the funny part, Oppenheimer hates you. And the reason it hates you is because the only criticisms the film levies are at normal Americans, at normal people. People, the flag-waving Americans who are there to cheer on Oppenheimer after the bombs are dropped. And they're all the ones cheering for the bombs. And they've been, you know, propagandized by the media to think that this bomb is huge and it's going to win America the war. And it's a great, you know, unifying effort for the national spirit. And of course, they're there with their little flags waving. And Oppenheimer has been contributing to this narrative the entire time. He has been helping build the bomb. He said that the bomb would end the war. It wasn't good, but it was necessary. He said that to a fellow scientist. It's not going to be great, but it's going to end the war once and for all. It'll end war as we know it. He justified this every step of the way. Whether or not he regrets it after the fact, like it's too late. You can't defect. You can't be a genuine accepted defector after the fact, after you've already nuked Japan. It doesn't work that way. There is a window of defection, of accepted defection, and it's somewhere between the beginning of the Manhattan Project and before he dropped the bombs. It doesn't work to, to say you feel, you feel sorry now and you're sorry and you regret it and you shouldn't have done it like after you've dropped the bombs. It doesn't work that way. Like too late. You've already changed history for the worse. You've already killed people. It doesn't work that way. But the entire movie is there to make you feel bad for him and to hate and direct your vitriol and disdain towards average Americans, just towards yourself, towards the, the flag waving Americans who are cheering him on. And he's getting all dizzy and he thinks he has to put on a show. And it's just really pathetic. It's extremely pathetic. And there's no other way to describe it other than a humiliation ritual. It's quite simply a humiliation ritual to watch Oppenheimer and to accept it for what it's putting forth, to accept that Oppenheimer was a man worth your respect and worth your time and worth your consideration. Because he was not, he is not, and he was not. Oppenheimer was a piece of garbage, and should this movie have been made in the 80s, I think it would have been, hopefully, more of a John Carpenter style film, where we're just making fun of Oppenheimer, and maybe this is too heavy a subject matter to be making fun of him, but at the very least, we could paint him as the villain that he was. We could say something real. We wouldn't play this makeup campaign to try and salvage his blasted legacy, which is rightfully in shambles and ruin, and everyone remembers him for the right reasons. And now we're going to come around and spin the story with this Hollywood dumpster fire. We're going to spin the story around and now everyone's going to say, oh, I didn't know that's how I was supposed to be thinking. I was thinking wrong the entire time. It just, I, can't, I don't know how else to put it other than it's the final nail in the coffin for counterculture. I think with gaming, gaming actually had a surprisingly quick death in this regard. I think the counterculture in gaming has been kind of dead for quite some time. I don't know when the last time I saw a game come out that felt genuinely rebellious and vindictive and resentful of authority and anti-conformity in the way that so many games were in the early 2000s, like Half-Life 2, like Mirror's Edge, like Dishonored. We just, we don't see this concerted effort anymore from so many different unique development studios kind of preaching a similar unifying ubiquitous message of vigilance in the face of overbearing authority. We just don't see this anymore. Please, somebody help me! Somebody's looking at me! Somebody's watching me! Help me! Please, help me! Help me! Help me! Help me! Help me! Please! Help me!
And in terms of filmmaking, I don't know if I could say when it died exactly, but Oppenheimer feels like the final nail in the coffin in terms of the vigilance and the anti-authority sentiment in filmmaking. The immense success of Oppenheimer, its induction into pretty much the Hall of Fame of movies, just completely and wholly embraced as a masterpiece and worthy of your time, and it's given every Oscar in the known book. It's insanity. It's really insanity, and it's humiliating, because Oppenheimer hates you. Where these games and films of the past were there to have you question your authorities and maybe question yourself in the meanwhile, these films were never directed to solely criticize you. Most of the time they were criticizing the authorities, and maybe as a side note, as an equal criticism, they examined you. And not because you're such a terrible person, just they're questioning how much you place a trust in these people, and should you place a trust in them. It's very, I think, loving. Sometimes it can be harsh, but I think it's very loving in that sense, especially George Romero, where he understands the compulsion to turn on the TV, to listen to the radio, to want to be babied and coddled by a system that you're so familiar with, and you've been babied and coddled by for years, and it's just your natural urge to want to listen to it. But it's very much loving, I think, with George Romero. And of course, he's not criticizing normal people any more than he's criticizing authority. It's pretty much equal. It's pretty fair fairly balanced, which I think is the best way to go about it. And so when you look at a film like Oppenheimer, which seems to direct no criticism towards Robert Oppenheimer, who was an agent of the state, as much as the film wants to paint him as some kind of outsider who didn't know what was going on, he was an agent of the state. He was state funded. And the film is there to paint him as the hero or the victim, whichever one it is, whichever one they feel like in the moment. He's either a hero or a victim. And then somehow the normal man, you peer pressured Robert Oppenheimer into killing hundreds of thousands of Japanese. Great job. It's it's your fault. <laughs> it is your fault that he he uh, made the bomb. It's your fault that it was dropped. It's your fault. Something you did. <laughs> Whatever we're dying from, you did. The entire film is telling you it's your fault. He did nothing wrong. And so it's just a humiliation ritual to watch that movie and accept it on that basis. Especially in the past when so many films would never have even gone to this length. They never would have said these kinds of things to people. The amount of disrespect that the film industry has for normal people now is staggering. And again, just considering how far we've come since the 80s and, you know, in terms of gaming, how far we've come since the early 2000s in terms of just the general mainstream messaging that most artists held was anti-authority. And now it's just dead. It's dead and it's gone. And Oppenheimer killed it.